So hi and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be showing you a full vehicle transformation and that is of this Audi A4. So as you can tell it's a pretty neglected car. Um, it's not been cleaned in quite a while. There's a lot of issues with traffic film build up. There's, um, there's quite a bit of dirt on the lower skirting, a lot of grit. Um, birds have had a go at it as well um, and also the alloys are in quite a bad state too. So in this video I'm basically going to be doing a full clean decontamination and I'm going to apply a glaze just to help kind of boost the gloss and also apply some paint protection at the end so I'm just going to be showing you the kind of full process of that. So of course with most videos it's just going to start off with a full pressure wash down so here I'm just using my Karch K4 I'm just trying to remove as much of this dirt and dust as possible before moving on to the contact wash um, and also the pre-wash as well so really because there wasn't too much sort of paint protection on this vehicle at this time and um, not too much comes off at this stage it's, it requires sort of more of a pre-wash to actually get rid of most of the dirt so if you've been around for any number of time you probably will know that the Hamber Rolls foam is one of my go-to snow foams I think it's an absolutely fantastic snow foam in terms of cleaning ability and um, so it was a good one to kind of bring out for this purpose so I'm using it at quite high panel impact ratio so a 5% panel impact ratio which is sort of as high as you can get with this kind of product and um, but it does a good job at basically getting it into a, a point where the contact wash is is safer and um, just to remove as much of that dirt as possible most pH neutral snow foams or weaker snow foams even built hamper at a weaker concentration here would struggle um, to remove a lot of this so I also just went on some of the trim um, using a soft Fallout Pro brush um, whilst the snow foam was still on here and also just using um, some Fallout Pro Citrus pre-wash just to kind of top that up and just help give it a little bit of a boost when I was actually dealing with these areas as well. So I find that this is quite helpful particularly on the trim um, on sort of kind of rubber seals as well on the, on the car. Some of the badges um, I have to admit I did make a bit of a mistake here doing it at this stage. I don't have an issue really with using it on the um, on the trim at this stage and using the brushes here but generally on the badges it's probably safer to go ahead and do this after the built hamper has been rinsed off. Um, so let me off for that mistake but to be honest this car's paint works in pretty bad condition already um, so I'm not entirely sure how much of a difference it would make at this stage. So I gave built hamper a pretty good dwell time at this point, it probably was on around for 10 minutes maybe um just because it wasn't actually a very warm day um as it isn't at the moment so it was quite easy to give it that longer dwell time um, and just to give it as much time as possible really to lift as much dirt as i could off the car so the next thing i wanted to do was actually clean the wheels so here i went in with the hammer corosol which i know is not a dedicated wheel cleaner um, and there is definitely better products you can get for this purpose and it's sort of safer to use proper wheel cleaner but I was trying to be lazy here and save a bit of time just by getting as much off as possible so whilst I was letting the Corosol kind of dwell and you can see the reaction happening what I did was went in with the Volet Pro Citrus just to give the tyres a good scrub down and then once that was done it was ready to power wash off and then go in with the contact wash of the wheels so for this I just topped it up again with um, the Corosol and I also went in with Garage Therapy's One Wheel Shampoo which is a really really great product and um, it has really really good lubrication so it definitely makes it a lot safer when you're dealing particularly with really dirty wheels and um, when you don't want to be rubbing that brake dust in because you know you're going to cause scratches and um, this feels a lot safer and it's also a lot more equipped to handle things like brake dust and to give the wheels a proper clean um, whereas most kind of normal car shampoos just wouldn't have enough power behind them to do that. So I like just to go in with a wash mitt and um, to clean as much of the wheels as possible. I find that this is probably the safest method that I've got. Um, so I use these yellow um, microfiber wash mitts and then just to get into all the corners, um, there's quite a few corners and sort of crevices on this wheel, so just to give them a proper clean. I used another Valet Pro Citrus, not, not Valet Pro Citrus, um, another Valet Pro brush to do this. Um, so this one's a little bit stiffer um, to help with this kind of these kind of bits. It can be a little bit more aggressive on wheels like this. Um, they don't tend to show up any kind of scratches as much, but you obviously want to be as careful as possible. So once I've given that power wash down, I was ready to start with the contact wash. 
So for this I was using another Garage Therapy product, so I was using Garage Therapy Decontamination Shampoo. So this is something you would use um, to kind of prepare a, prepare a finish for sort of any paint correction you're doing, any paint protection, and generally just sort of strip the surface back, remove any existing protection, um, so you've got kind of a clean slate to work with. So it's not something you would use on a regular maintenance wash because it's got quite high cleaning ability. So again, it really does help with cars like this that are just absolutely filthy. And although a pH neutral shampoo was probably after built hammer also film would remove quite a lot of it and you wouldn't really have any issues with cleaning ability, but this just gives it a really sort of thorough clean, which is particularly what you need if you're planning on doing later steps like paint protection um, and applying the glaze, which was what I did um, after doing the full decontamination. So I used, I think it was around 30 mil in the bucket here, um, so pretty standard amount. You can actually apply this as a snow foam um, and use this separately, but I just went ahead and did the contact wash. So after that, I followed it up with some iron fallout remo remover, um, so it's Corosol again. I did actually use a towel and glue remover for this. I used um, Carchem towel and glue remover. Um, however, I completely forgot to turn the camera on, so I'm afraid I don't have any clips of that. Um, but next, moving on to the clay bar stage. So I'm using the Econ shampoo here as well, just to provide the lubrication for the clay. And then in terms of the actual clay, I am using Bill Hammer's soft clay. Um, so really, I could probably have done with using a more aggressive clay, but at the time of filming this video, I didn't actually have anything that was sort of more aggressive than this. Um, I sort of just really kind of bought this clay for my own car. Um, as I find that soft clay is you know, perfectly fine to deal with the kind of contamination on my vehicle. Um, but for this, I probably could have done with more aggressive clay. It, this car's probably around 10 years old now, and the owner didn't know what I was talking about when I talked about clay in the vehicle. So really probably could have done with something a little bit more um, you know, aggressive because the paint already wasn't in great condition. So that concern over scratch and swirls was less of a concern really than properly decontaminating nice in the paintwork um, but it still did a, did a good job it's a, you know a reasonably powerful clay despite still being quite soft so what I wanted to do is I didn't have time to actually correct the paint properly it would, would have probably taken quite a while on this vehicle and um, but just to give it a bit of a boost I wanted to apply a glaze so I've not actually used this product in quite a while now and um, since I did paint protection on my own car um, I didn't sort of need to use it, but for this it was a good reason to bring it out. So this is Paul Boy's Black Hole. So this is essentially a glaze, so it's going to fill in minor sort of scratches and swirl marks. It's not going to work miracles, it's not that kind of product, and you know, it's not going to replace the need for paint correction. But if you're struggling for time and you just want to give that paint finish a bit of a boost, then it's, you know, it's a good option to go for. Um, and I think it's kind of suitable for these sort of purposes. So what I wanted to do next is while I was just waiting for that to dry um, and to properly kind of cure, I just moved on to the wheels. Um, so I used, it was this was Onyx, so it was GB Detailing's tire and trim dressing. Um, so it leaves a nice finish this, it's not sort of too flashy, too um, kind of glossy. It doesn't really detract from the paintwork, it's quite a nice finish, I really like this. And it also works really well on the trim, so I just went ahead and use that on the bumper as well and it leaves a really dry finish and um, it doesn't feel greasy at all and it goes on really easily. Um, so another product that's really easy to use is going back to this poor boy's black hole. In terms of removing the product there is absolutely no effort whatsoever to remove this product. It's probably the easiest product I've ever worked with and um, it just comes off the panel so easily just with one wipe. You don't have to spend hours buffing it and just it doesn't feel like a workout to remove this product, so it's a really nice one to work with. Um, I do really like using this, and I think that it did, you know, hide some of the minor kind of scratches and swirl marks and just give a little bit of an overall boost in gloss, which is all I was really looking for at this point. So as well with this, you know, it, it you can apply this under paint protection. It is going to reduce the, um, the sort of durability of it slightly, um, but it's. To be honest, I've used it with like Fusoco in the past and not found a massive, massive impact in comparison to using it without. So I didn't really have an issue with using it here um, and I still you know, was happy to go ahead and apply a wax over the top of it. So for this, I was using another GB detailing product and this is Hydro. So 
This is, as it sounds, um, a really water repellent wax and I actually have a review of GB Detailing's products on the website, not on the website, um, on the YouTube channel um, where you can actually check this out and see the water behaviour of this product. It's really, really fantastic. Um, really, really good, especially for winter um, if you're applying a wax like this just to get that water behaviour. Um, it's something that I do look for. Um, so I'm not used to applying waxes if I'm honest, I'm using quite a lot of detail sprays and spray sealants at the moment but it kind of felt nice to go back to that kind of traditional wax and it was a good product to apply. So another GB detailing product here and that's just the glass cleaner, um, so just a standard glass cleaner, quite high alcohol content so it does tend to flash off quite quickly um, but just did a good job here at cleaning the windows, nothing too fancy, doesn't leave a water repellent coating um, but just you know it does a decent job of actually cleaning them um, and just leaving that finish to kind of complete the overall look of the car really. So I just did this whilst I was waiting for the wax to cure and um, so this took around probably 15-20 minutes to actually cure properly and um, with it being quite a cold day so then I just went ahead and buffed that off so it's not the easiest wax in the world to buff off but it's definitely not the hardest I've dealt with a lot more difficult waxes to remove um, it's I'd say kind of mid-range in terms of the ease of removal and um, so it took a little bit of elbow grease but nothing nothing like a full-on workout and um, like some waxes I've kind of used in the past and um, it was a really nice wax to use it probably goes on easier than it comes off and um, it does go on like butter and um, but it's still you know it, it does a good job and I think that if you go and check out that video on the water repellency of it you'll see that it's definitely worth the kind of effort it, it takes to remove it So here you can actually see the overall finish and um, there's definitely some increase in the gloss, a big transformation from where we started, um, much much cleaner, properly decontaminated and protected, ready to probably get filthy again during winter. So thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you have enjoyed it, hope you found it helpful and um, if you have then it'd be fantastic if you could give it a like, comment down below if you've got any questions or any thoughts about the products and subscribe for weekly detailing videos and um, so thanks again and i'll see you next time